I'm going to show you how I made a card with the beautiful Magnolia Mood Stamp Set Bundle from Stampin' Up's Online Exclusives. This is one of my favorite bundles uh, right now that's in a current well, that's current with Stampin' Up, um, because it's awesome. It's so pretty, um, so easy to use, so easy to stamp with, and um, it's really, really quick and simple to color as well, which I also love. So um, anyhow, so yeah, I'm just gonna show you. It's a pretty quick and easy little card as well, and um, just wanted to, to uh, run through that with you, and hopefully I am gonna go live here at some point, because there we go, it looks like it finally has updated my screen and uh, looks like we are now live and good to go. So we're going to be using the Magnolia Mood Stamp Set Bundle and I'm just going to wiggle things around here a little bit, trying to get a little more centered and hopefully somewhat straight. And um, hey Sally, thanks for joining today. And I don't know if you can hear, of course I went out of town for uh, spring break last week with my daughter and came back home and I was fine until yesterday and all of a sudden I started with this runny nose and craziness. So I don't know exactly what I have, but started with a runny nose, so I'll, uh, we have tissues, drink, hopefully we'll survive without, you know, coughing or, you know, wiping my nose on the project, because <laughs> icky. So, all right, uh, so let us get going here. This is the card we're going to be making. It is um, just, like I said, real quick and easy, a little embossing, a little bit of stamping, and um, yeah, so some pretty, uh, a couple pretty little uh, magnolia pieces on it, so from Uncle Julio's, yay, Karen, hopefully you uh, like it. So <laughs> it's one of our favorite places to eat at, as you well know. So um, everybody, thanks for hopping in today. I appreciate you being here. So this is the Magnolia Mood stamp set. And as I said, it is one of the online exclusives from Stampin' Up, meaning that it is not in any catalog. So it is out in the online store. You can purchase it on any type of order that you want, but um, just know that you're not going to find it in a catalog. And things in the online exclusives kind of come and go. So if you see an item that you like, it's in stock, grab it um, when you're ordering so that you don't miss out on it. So this bundle... Um, so far, it's in stock, and hopefully it'll stay that way because I love it. <laughs> so, all right, so that is the stamp set. Got some really pretty sentiments in it, and then the beautiful magnolia flowers. And I'm not sure what that is, the seeds or something. So, I don't know, probably someone who knows more about plants can tell me what that is, but I don't know. I know it's a part of the magnolia tree, but I don't know what it is. Um, and then there are the coordinating magnolia mood dyes. And this one, actually, we're going to use on the card today, so I'll show you how this one works. But this is these are accessory dyes, meaning that they don't um, cut out anything that you've stamped. They're just kind of some pretty, um, some pretty little... Uh, accessory pieces, I guess is what I'll say. And then the open dies are the ones that will cut out your stamped images in this set. So again, um, it's a really pretty bundle and everybody should get it, at least I think so. <laughs> a couple other things that I used on this. The background of my card is probably difficult to see on video, but hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better in the photos that I share on my blog tomorrow. But I did emboss the background of it with the Distressed Tile 3D embossing folder. This is one of the folders that is carrying forward into the new annual catalog. It is currently available um, in the online store. It's, I don't know if it's technically an online exclusive, but it's back in the catalog and it'll be around for the next year. So uh, yay for that. Uh, thunderstorms, we're just getting some good rain here today. No, not really any storms. So it's cold and rainy, kind of miserable out there, but all good. And then the other thing that I used is one of the Wonderful Thoughts dies. And I use this one, which is probably the die that I've used the most out of this entire set. Um, this is actually uh, coordinates with the Wonderful Thoughts stamp set. Um, but it, it's designed to cut out all the little sentiments in that stamp set. Um, and then there are a couple of dies, this one, this one, this, this, um, and then this is obviously an accessory piece that will cut out other sentiments. So this one I find to be very useful because it fits a lot of things. So um, if you don't love the, the whole uh, stamp set bundle, grab the dies because it's always nice to have a good sentiment die. So, all right, uh, that is the stamp set and what I used. And again, online exclusives, I'm just going to remind you briefly to go take a peek at those. Anytime you're out in the online store, um, Stampin' Up! has announced their retiring list for the current annual catalog, meaning the 23 to 24 annual catalog, and the January to April 2024 mini catalog. So make sure you're out picking up those. Um, there are some of the items that are going to be on sale uh, starting on the 9th of April, but everything on the list is while supplies last, whether it is on sale or not. So if there are things you're really wanting, make sure you go out and get them, and then take a peek at the online exclusives as well. All right. 
Uh, so let's get going here. Um, I have got my original card base was my preferred card base, which is the four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half across the top. So it's a top fold card. But I know that some of you prefer the standard book fold card. So this is one of those that will work with either one. Um, so I wanted to show you that you can use, you can cut, you can do just a standard card base, which is uh, eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter in the middle. And this same card will work with that. Um, so ahead of time, I did emboss a, another panel of Petal Pink cardstock with the Distress Tile 3D embossing folder. And this one is cut to about four and a quarter by five and a half, so it should fit over the entire card front if I've cut everything correctly, which hopefully I have. And we're going to use a little bit of the multi-purpose liquid glue. I usually use that adhesive um, when I'm going to do something like this where it's going to cover the entire card front so that I've got a little extra wiggle room. Otherwise, liquid glue and I are not always the best of friends because I usually end up sticking my fingers in it and then gluing myself to the project. And yeah, not, not you know, it's not my favorite adhesive. We'll say that. I know some of you love it and I don't mean to, you know, be mean, but liquid glue and I just are not always friends. <laughs> I prefer seal, stamp and seal. So I use that whenever I can. All right, so we've got these two stuck together. Uh, next thing that I did was I grabbed a piece of um, petal pink cardstock and this one is cut to about four inches wide by four and a quarter tall. And we are gonna stamp the pretty magnolia image in petal pink ink uh, two times on the petal pink cardstock panel. So let's go ahead and ink it up well here. And just so you know, the demonstrator pre-order from the upcoming annual catalog, the 24 to 25 annual catalog, started today, and I was able to order um, my customers' catalogs. So yay, those hopefully should be coming and arriving at my house in the next couple of days. So if you're a customer of mine, um, hopefully you'll have your catalog fairly soon. I'm going to pack them up and send them back out just as quickly as I can once I get them. So, all right, again, inking it up with the petal pink ink. And we're gonna turn it the other way around and stamp it kind of on the lower left corner as well. Hey, Carol, thanks for hopping in today. And uh, yeah, everybody, I see a bunch of people are saying hello, so I appreciate you being here. All right, so we've got this stamped twice on the cardstock panel. And then I'm gonna grab, while I am stamping this, this is gonna go actually on the inside of my card. Um, it's basic white cut to four by five and a quarter, but since I have the petal pink ink out and my image, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it here to get that done. All right, so there we go. That's that really pretty magnolia image. So, all right, close that up. And then I'm gonna grab my chamois and clean this off quick because we're gonna stamp it in uh, Tuxedo Black Memento ink. So it probably wouldn't really matter, but I try to clean the things off in between. All right, bringing back my card base. And then I'm gonna take this piece that I have just stamped with the beautiful magnolia image, and we're gonna stick it um, to the card front with a little stamp and seal. Um, again, you can use your liquid glue if you prefer that. I just don't. <laughs> and everybody has their own favorite adhesive. Uh, stamp and seal, stamp and dimensionals, uh, mini glue dots, those are all my favorites um, just because I don't tend to stick myself to everything with them, but sometimes I still do. All right, so we're gonna take this and again, just roughly center it top to bottom, inside to side. No specific, it doesn't have to be perfect on there. All right, um, ahead of time, I did go ahead and cut from basic white cardstock. Let me grab the die set here. With this large die from the Magnolia Mood dies, I went ahead and cut a piece of basic white cardstock with it. And this is what you get. It's a beautiful kind of delicate uh, Magnolia image. And it's got all the kind of little embossed lines in it as well. So it's a really, really pretty, pretty, pretty die cut. And then we're gonna take some mini glue dots and we're gonna stick that to the card front. And it doesn't really matter necessarily where your mini glue dots end up at. Um, I just tried to keep them centered more on the actual flower part since I knew that was gonna be, whoop, was gonna be covered um, no matter how the glue dots landed on it. <laughs> it was gonna be covered uh, by some extra pieces that I'll be sticking on over the top of it. And we'll just go ahead and stick that right on the card front, kind of angle it across, trying to get it, it's not gonna go completely side to side, but to get it to cover as much of the Kind of the card front as I could. So there we go. I'm um, going to set that aside and grab some basic white cardstock and we're going to go back to doing a little stamping and coloring. And again, I apologize about the sniffles. I'm trying not to sniffle into the phone too much. <laughs> so uh, ugh. 
I don't know. I'm one of those people that usually if there's a cold or a respiratory anything nearby, um, yeah, I get it. Yay. <laughs> so, all right, I've got Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, and I'm inking up that large magnolia image, and we are going to stamp that, I guess it doesn't really matter, on basic white cardstock. And I'm going to give it a good smoosh, make sure we get a good image on it. And then we're going to take the little, I don't know if this is a seed or what you call it. So I'm sure, again, somebody knows, but it's just not me. Um, what that's called, I think it's a seed, like where the seeds come from for more trees. I don't know. Um, we're going to ink that also with our Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And we're going to stamp it here on the basic white cardstock trying to make sure that I've got enough space in between the two images so that I can put the dies on there and run them both through at the same time. And then the final thing we're going to stamp is I've got the Happy Birthday Sentiment um, in Mossy Meadow ink, and we're going to stamp that also on the basic white panel. And put that up here kind of near the top because it's just going to be a real thin little die cut that we're going to do with that. So, all right. Close that one up before I stick my fingers in it. And then I'm gonna grab some of my Stampin' Blends. And I have got, I'm just using the light Mossy Meadow um, because I find that when I use the dark, it's really dark. <laughs> so, and um, that wasn't really the look that I was going for on this card. So I just used the light and kind of colored over the top of it a couple times in any of the areas where I wanted some shading. So I'm gonna start here by tracing around the leaves. Again, this is the light Mossy Meadow Stampin' Blends marker. And then I'm just going to scratch over and color the entire thing. Just getting color on it. Don't need to spend a lot of time trying to make it look all pretty. Just get color covering the whole thing. Same thing with this leaf. All right. And coloring that all in. And as you can see with the light um, Mossy Meadow, it's dark, but you can still see the detail of the leaves through it. And that was kind of the look that I was going for. I know that generally... I'm not, I don't know if all magnolia trees, but the magnolia trees I am familiar with um, have a really dark green, kind of almost shiny leaf to them. So that was kind of the look that I was going for with the mossy meadow. Um, but you can make them whatever color you want. So um, took you a while to get used to the liquid glue. Yeah, I don't know. I've tried and tried. <laughs> and I know some of my team members absolutely love it. But yeah, I'm sure if I used it more, I would like it better, but I just, I end up sticking myself to the project every darn time I use it. So that's why I stay away from it. <laughs> I just make a mess and then I'm unhappy and there's glue on everything and yeah. And then I start over and then I use some other sort of adhesive. So glue dots I like because they're sort of repositionable as long as you haven't really smushed them down. Um, you can reposition it. Same thing with stamp and seal and dimensionals. So, all right. Going to go and color the smaller image here. Um, and again, I mentioned the demonstrator pre order from the upcoming catalog has started. Um, I had a couple new team members join, so yay for that. Um, people taking advantage and getting that starter kit. Um, you pay $99, the kit will ship for free, and you can pick pre order items in your starter kit. And you get to pick $125 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise uh, here in the US. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you come be a part of our team. And uh, then you get at least a 20% discount on everything that you order from Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator. And yeah, and you get to come hang out with us and uh, yeah, can attend Stampin' Up! events, get to order early from the catalogs and all that fun stuff. So, all right, so we've got the basics done of the coloring. So, uh, hey, Jennifer, thanks for hopping in. So, uh, I know people prefer, yes, I do know that some of you prefer um, card folds that are on the left-hand side and not the top. That's just everybody has their own preference on how they um, how they like to their cards to look. So it's just, it's totally up to you um, which way you prefer. I actually like the top fold ones better. That's just my preference. I like the way they look a little bit better um, and particularly the way that they photograph a little bit better. Um, but I know some people like the side fold ones because they're more of a traditional looking card. So it just depends on which way you prefer. All right, now I'm going back in and adding just a little bit of shading here with that same light Mossy Meadow Stampin' Blends marker and doing it kind of mostly close to where the flower is at in here and then um, spreading it out a little bit where Stampin' Up! has shown me where the shading is on the leaf. So I'm kind of doing in and around the flower and then stretching it out just a little bit. 
And same thing on this image, we're just gonna go right underneath here and add on another layer of ink. So if you are looking for, when you're doing your Stampin' Blends, um, if you don't want to do the dark and the shading and all that sort of thing, you know, with the Stampin' Blends marker, you can add another layer of color on with your light Stampin' Blends marker, and it gives it just a little bit more, a little darker, a little bit more definition. Um, so yeah, so that's how you can do it if you don't want to have to grab out the dark Stampin' Blends markers. All right, put that one aside, and now I'm going to grab my Lemon Lolly Stampin' Blends. I'm going to start with the light, and we're going to go, again, coloring in the, the little seed thing, whatever this is called, from the Magnolia. And I think these are normally yellow, at least in the ones that I have seen. I believe that they are typically yellow, um, but they may be different colors depending on you know what part of the world you're in and what color your magnolia trees are there. And then we're also gonna color in the very flower center here because again, those are typically yellow here um, with the magnolia trees that I have seen. And then I'm gonna grab my dark lemon lolly and stamp it up has nicely put in here um, kind of where the shading should go on this image. So it's super easy to color this one. And I come back in here and just add in a little bit of dark lemon lolly kind of down in all those shaded areas. Hopefully I got them all there. And then same thing in here. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of shading in the areas that are shaded on the flower center. And then my final little bit of coloring is gonna be with uh, petal pink ink or Petal Pink Stampin' Blends marker. And I'm gonna grab, I'm starting with the light one here. And we're just gonna do a little bit of adding in again where the shading is at already. I'm just adding in a little bit of Petal Pink uh, with the Stampin' Blends marker. And again, I've seen some of the Magnolia images that I've looked at out online. Some of them are like a really bright pink color. And so there are all different shades of them. Um, but again, most of the, the Magnolia's uh, flowers that I've seen are white, so that was kind of the, with a little little touch of pink on them, but and that was kind of the, the look that I was going for when I did my coloring on it. And again, just adding in a little bit of the light petal pink ink with my Stampin' Blends marker. And then I'm going to come back in with my color lifter. This one is one of my favorite favorite tools when it comes to um, coloring with blends uh, because you can lighten and blend and do all that sort of thing. So on my little seed thing or whatever this is called, I went ahead and up near the top of all the little points on here, just did a little scratch with the color lifter to lighten it just a hair. Um, so that kind of almost gave me like three, three shades of the yellow on it. And um, with the color lifter, you definitely want to give it a second to dry because it does sort of, it continues to, to um, be active in making the colors lighter until it dries. So give it a second before you over color it and then you're like, oh, I took way too much color away. So, um, so yeah, then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the flower center. Just adding in a, little, a few little light spots. And then I'm also gonna take it and kind of color over the petal pink that I have put here on my flower. And I'm gonna use it basically as a little bit of a blending tool here with the petal pink. So that's another way you can use it. Um, it works well on backgrounds and that sort of thing, or anytime you wanna do this where you just wanna color over it and lighten everything just a little bit. Um, Cause like I said, all I wanted was just kind of a hint of pink on it. So that's where the color lifter works really well, at least for me. And again, you can always go and add in a little more color if you, did, you know, over lighten and you're like, oh, I took too much color away, then you can come in and um, add a little bit more of the pink or come back and take a little bit more away like I'm doing here where I found a couple spots where it's a little darker than I want it to be. And I think we're going to call that good and we're just going to go die cut it. So, all right, let me grab my dies here. So I've got two sets. This is the Magnolia Mood dies and they coordinate, um, these two dies coordinate with the stamped images. And then the third image that I'm gonna cut here is my sentiment. And this is from the Wonderful Thoughts dies and I'm gonna use that to cut the sentiment. It probably will take me two passes to get this through the die cutting machine because I don't wanna take a chance and have something shift and um, have it cut out all sorts of crazy. So I'll probably run it through in two passes. So I'll be right back. I don't know if you can hear the rain outside. It's raining kind of steady, steady here in New Jersey. All right, so whoop, 
my two magnolia dies here. Get those back on the die sheet. And then there are my two die cuts. And then I just have the sentiment left. And there's my sentiment that I cut out with the wonderful thoughts dies. And we're just gonna layer this right over the card front. I'm gonna start with the larger flower in some Stampin' Dimensionals. And we'll go ahead and just stick a couple of those around here. I'm gonna try to keep the dimensionals a little bit towards the center, particularly on this side where I'm gonna be tucking this piece underneath it. Um, the other ones can go out a little bit further. Um, Maybe I'll try one there. Hopefully it'll not be in a spot where the, the little die cut underneath it is gonna hit it, but if it does, we'll trim it down. So, all right, there we go. I can't even believe we're already into April. I don't know, like I said, as, as I get older, the years do seem to be flying by a little quicker. <laughs> so, all right, and then we're gonna take our larger flower and we're just gonna layer it over the top of my die cut image below and give it a good smoosh down there. Make sure that the dimensionals are stuck down well. And then I'm gonna grab my glue dots. Hold on so I can find them back again. And take a couple glue dots and stick those to the back of this little die cut. And then we're gonna tuck that here underneath the larger die cut flower. And eh, I don't know that it needs to go anywhere special. We'll just call that good. And I gotta wipe my nose, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. I hate, I hate being sick. And like I said, for whatever reason, if there is a um, cold type virus going around, they seem to seek me out and find me and I get whatever it is. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to grab, um, I put a couple stamp and dimensionals on the uh, back of the sentiment and we're going to layer that over the top. And I can tell already this one is in the wrong spot. So I'm going to get that one off of there. We're going to stick it a little bit closer over here like that. Um, just because I can tell that leaf is not going to be in a spot where the dimensional will be in the right place. <laughs> so I can always tuck a dimensional up underneath if I need to after the fact. But I want a little bit of the, um, there we go. It does need one there because after I peeled it off, it kind of lifted the edge up. So how I do that is I take one of my little half stampin' dimensionals that I've chopped up and I take my snips and I peel off both sides of the backing. I stick it to my snips, there we go. Tuck it underneath the edge where I want it to be stuck, smash down, and then the dimensional is magically put where I want it to be <laughs> without having to pry everything up and redo it all. So, all right, so that's most of the card front. I did add a couple of the little petal pink gems from the petal pink and Pretty Peacock Foil Gems. Um, these are some gems that are in the current mini catalog, I believe is where these are from. And they're carrying over to the, the annual catalog. So these are gonna be around for a little bit. So they're one that you can stock up on because um, the colors are pretty and because you'll like them. <laughs> so go ahead and pick up a couple packs of these so you'll have them around and can use them whenever you're using Petal Pink and Pretty Peacock. But all right, and I've already stamped on the um, inside of the card. This did ahead of time when I was stamping on the card front. And um, you did a little petal pink stamping, if you missed that, on basic white cardstock. Again, that same magnolia image, and we're just gonna use some stamp and seal to stick that to the inside of the card. Oh, thanks, Jen. I, yeah, I love that embossing folder. It's one of my favorite ones. It's just a little, a little texture, and but a little muted, and it's pretty, so, all right. Um, this is a piece of four by five and a quarter basic white cardstock. All the measurements and everything will be on my blog tomorrow and I will link up directly to the blog post uh, once it goes live around eight o'clock in the morning Eastern time. And I'm gonna fold it closed and kind of gently do the run the bone folder across the crease, trying to make sure that I don't smash all that pretty embossing on the card front. And we're gonna be all done for the day. So that is it. 
So card I made ahead of time with the top fold on it and card we made here with the side fold on it. So you can pick whichever fold is your favorite and create the card that way. Um, so that's it. I appreciate y'all being here. Thanks so much for joining me on this rainy, rainy Tuesday and listening to my runny nose voice. Um, hopefully by Friday, I'll be rid of the runny nose, but we shall see. <laughs> so um, again, I appreciate y'all being here. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. I'll plan to be live around two o'clock Eastern time on Friday, uh, again, with another project. So um, yeah, so have a wonderful, wonderful week. Again, if you have questions about joining and um, being able to pre-order, holler at me. I'll be happy to chat with you about that. Um, or if you have any questions about the card, feel free to post them, and um, I'll be happy to answer those as well. So thanks again, everybody, for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will chat with you all soon.